Tony Clendenny, and this is Gary Harkle, and I'm out of the Pottstown office, uh, and Gary's out of the Conkeysville office. We're here to help you in any way we can. Uh, we want to give you an overview, again, on the red-white valve, and I think the uh, catalog that you have uh, is uh, a, a nice improvement because we've got it all in one book, other than the spec sheets on the the hydraulic or the hydronic uh, balancing valves and the easy press and the, and the cast iron ball valve. But everything, including the items that are that are loose, is in the in the catalog. And the catalog basically uh, is so uh, printed out that it is in two sections. One, it's all the lead-free product is in green. And uh, the leaded product in the back is in red that we have, and it, it's all in one book, including some of the, the uh, iron valves, butterflies, gates, bolts, and checks, which we'll go over in a minute. But I think it also gives you a, uh, uh, a, a little story about uh, red-white, and that's what I'd like to do, just to re review again uh, the story about red-white. About uh, back in the early 70s, Red White, which was owned by Toyo and Mitsubishi and the holding company in Japan, came to the to the West Coast. <coughs> Red White being the the uh, Japanese flag during World War II. You remember the, the zeros and everything else when we were looking at uh, old war movies. But uh, the Red White came from Japan, and that's what they came with, rather than a name that uh, sounded Japanese. And uh, they came with kits, K-I-T-Z, which I had for many, many years, 25 years. And uh, kits uh, changed directions and concentrated almost entirely in the last 10 years with uh, uh, refinery work, Exxon, Mobil, DuPont making cast steel valves and very, very exotic stuff that sells for $150,000 a valve, that type of thing, for the drilling and uh, petrochemical market. And they really have gone away from the uh, plumbing and commercial spec type of work. Um, they still are around and <clears throat> they're a fine company. In fact, they bought the last, and to get to back up a little bit, Red, white, and, and, and kits came to the, to the West Coast and were dominant in that section of the country, uh, west of the Mississippi, to this day. Um, back in the, the late 90s, red, white uh, found themselves in a difficult position. They had to find somebody to make their ball valves since they weren't making ball valves. They didn't, uh, they, they were strictly gate globes and checks. <clears throat> Went to Red to the uh, Riccio Industrial Group in Italy. They have three plants today. They still do, and they've opened up since then in Ch in uh, China. And the valve was basically uh, gate valves were going down, and the whole valves were going up the other way. And this went on for about ten years, and uh, the Italians uh, decided, or when Toyo came to them and said, "We're." We're ready to sell if you would like to, since you're doing 80% of our work for us. Uh, gates and globes and checks are dying. So they, so they bought the company for a million bucks. Inventory, stock, agents, the whole thing. And they did not change the name because Red White had established themselves in the spec market, especially west of the Mississippi, and also the buying groups, and one of which is AD, which you're a member of. Um, <laughs> And uh, the Italians kept the name, and to this day, uh, they uh, have uh, uh, the, the whole operation. Since then, Toyo has sold off the remaining few plants that made cast bronze valves to Kits. So Kits has, instead of 75% of the market, they have about 90%, but in Japan. But um, 
I think that's important because uh, there are a lot of, uh, I call them uh, importers, uh, brokers that go to four or five different countries and bid on the business and put it in a box and bring it to the United States and then sell it to distributors. We, in fact, actually are a manufacturer, and I think that's a strong point for you all to remember when you're talking to contractors. Unfortunately, Red White, uh, for a variety of reasons I won't go into, didn't have strong representation. So the name and the and the and that's what we're here for, because we uh, we know that the important thing is to get out and uh, not only get the valve specified, which is going to be easier with lead the lead free issue. Um, to, to uh, get to the contractor and, and make sure that he knows the full story of, of where of where red uh, where we've been and uh, where we're going as far as uh, the company. The other thing that I think is important is that to make lead free alloy, um, the Italians, who are one of the largest OEMs. Uh, and manufacturers of uh, bowl valves forge everything. Pretty much everything is that we've been making is forged and not cast bronze. Uh, when you're looking at a cast bronze va uh, valve, one of the reasons that we came out with three different size or configurations in bowl valves, and you'll see them here, the red handle, the yellow handle, and the green handle, is that we uh, for years had uh, competed with people that made bronze castings and a lot of people uh, like Cambraco or Apollo, Nipco, Milwaukee and others uh, made a bronze and still do to this day, predominantly make bronze ball valves and some people equate the quality of a valve with the weight of the valve. And one of the things that's uh, interesting is that a forging actually has less porosity, almost none, because it's heated up to 800 degrees where it's red hot, put into a forging machine and then stamped so it has much greater tensile strength than a bronze casting and practically no risk of porosity or sand holes. So there's, there's an advantage there. So in the early days, where this weight issue came about, uh, we made the heaviest valve that you see here on the red handle, and we still make it. It's probably the biggest selling valve that we have on the West Coast, because they started with that valve style. The other valve, the yellow handle, is a little lighter, and this one's the lightest that's made in China. These two valves are basically the red handle and yellow handle are made in Italy. Uh, and this valve is basically made with our parts that we ship to China. We assemble it over there. Um, the difference between the valves, they're all full port. They all have 600 WOG, W-O-G. They all have 150 pounds steam rating. The difference basically is these two are UL and FM for, for specified engineer, special ULFM uh, for fire protection or what have you uh, are important. Are important. The, the, the other major difference is this has a 125 pound gas rating, 5 pound and half pound, because if you go to 125 you certainly can go to 5 and you can go down to a half pound. This one has a rating of 5, of, um, five pound and half pound and the lightest pattern that we have uh, is a half pound. So, like the small appliance valve, which is a half pound, we make uh, that part of the, uh, the valve configuration to, to cover all bases. But again, you're stocking, I think, the, the best of both worlds. It's a competitive, it's a nice looking, it's forged, it's uh, got all your ratings, 600 watt, 150 steam, ULFM, and 5 pound gas. If you have need for a 125 pound gas rating, you certainly have it available in your catalog, um, both in uh, leaded and lead free. The other important thing to remember is that being a forged and bowl valve specialty house with three plants in Italy, we uh, have a tremendous advantage in 2009 
when the California market, and the state rather, changed to a lead-free alloy, or DCR brass. And a lot of people said, oh, we're going to wait to 2014, we're not going to do it now. We're going to... Well, they had to change in, in 2010, so we've been making valves uh, for quite a few years, four or five years, 2009. And we are a different than most other manufacturers because there's three ways of making a lead-free alloy. One is to add, to, to, to take, take care of the, uh, the lead issue. You take the lead out, which is used primarily to, to help smooth out the machining, the efficiency. It makes it more malleable. It's, it's a softer alloy. There are three ways to do that, and we use the last one. We don't use silicon, we don't use bismuth as, an, as a substitute for lead. We use more brass and copper. And it slows down our machining. It's more expensive, but we have two advantages. One is, with silicone, like NIPCO has experienced, you have to raise or you have to use a high temperature flux and a high temperature uh, solder. And it takes about three times the amount of time to solder a valve, whether it's half inch or whether it's two inch. And you can't go to a contractor that's been soldering for 30 years and say, well now we're going to have a class that you take to show you how to solder. It's been a, a, a disaster. Bismuth, again, is used, but it's a carcinogen, and it has one negative, and that is that when you're machining, it, 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 it often makes the uh, alloy brittle and you don't need uh, cracks in your in your valves. We use more brass, more copper. We uh, it, It's costly, but you can solder the same way you've been soldering for the last 50 years. So that's one big difference. And the experience that we've had, we actually control our alloy. If you're dealing with the Chinese, it's uh, difficult. We have found this to be especially true with uh, shark bite which is a valve, a, a push fitting that uh, we represent, cash acne. And uh, the push fit fittings are basically, again, controlled by the Australians, where it's all made, 80% of it, because they actually handle the alloy. They're not going to a Chinese factory. And as you know, the Chinese are famous. Uh, I don't want to bash the Chinese. Well, maybe I do. Uh, the, uh, you, you, you sign a contract with the Chinese, and, and it's good for about a month. And then all of a sudden, they, they go around the corner, you know, and it's another guy that's selling out a little cheaper. So they don't tell you that. But that's the problem, and you hear this over and over again, not just with dog food or toothpaste, but everything. Um, we don't have a patent uh, on shark bite, because, and we didn't get a, a patent uh, because the Chinese don't believe in patent law. I mean, they steal everything. Uh, that's just the nature. Uh, but it is important to, to know that we control our alloy, uh, and we have been since the 2009 era, so we have a, we've got a good experience on that. Um, have you had any pushback on the valves that you're presently stocking, which is basically the yellow handle and copper and iron pipe, and also the pro press or the press valve. Mm -hmm. I have good experience with yep. so far. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's a great product, and it's uh, it's it's. And there's a few customers that haven't heard of Red White before, but I think it's important that uh, you have these because. That little story about Red, White, and Riccio Industrial Complex is spelled out here. And I think it's important for them to realize that the history of Red, White, where it came from, where it's been, and what, what, what's, what's going on since then, they bought them. And the fact that they've an actual prime manufacturer, uh, it's, it's not something that we uh, send out a quota on and say, we you bid this, and it ends up in four or five different countries, all of, in Asia somewhere. Uh, the uh, the pro press uh, is certainly growing. We had several requests for um, a swing check that um, has uh, PTF uh, 
uh, disc, you know, that, that's not available yet, but I, I see where that's going to be needed. Uh, there's also um, a pro press or press valve that's available in leaded, but it's not available. It's, it's this, the, the valve that I'm referring to is on page page 11, and you'll notice down here on number 250 on page 11, and that's uh, available only in leaded, but I, I see a need for it in lead free. And we had people uh, requesting that, and I think for good reason. The uh, again the. Uh, on page uh, three, you'll notice that the press valve is available on the XL up through two inch and XLC, which is the standard today for two and a half, three, and four. We also have on page three a domestic valve that's assembled with our parts in California, so it qualifies for over 51 percent, but it doesn't qualify for the Steel Act of Pennsylvania, which was. Uh, enacted in 1849. We're wondering if they're ever going to change, but since they don't make any steel anymore. We also have tankless water heater kits, as well as uh, there's a sheet here on the hydronic uh, balancing valves, which uh, we have in lead-free as well as leaded. Uh, that's a nice, that's a, a very, very uh, strong market that's growing. The pricing on those is really good. Yes. We did a big job up in Scranton with those. Um, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. Was it lead free or leaded? That one was leaded. Leaded. Mm -hmm. yeah. Psychotronics will be leaded, right? Yeah, they should be, but... Uh, it's not potable water. It's all lead -free. Well, what if, what if I, I... On an office bill, I mean on a condominium that's 10 stories, 50 stories, some of the systems may be domestic hot water, as well as heating, I would think. Could be, you know. And we have customers that are asking for it in my brief, so. Yeah. I think some of them now are in some in such a panic mode with the lead free, they're just like, just give us everything lead free, we don't have to worry about it. Safe and yeah. If they don't need it, they'll, they'll just ask for it. Right. <laughs> I think um, well, we've heard that over and over again where uh, obviously for an industrial plant that's using a hundred ball valves and he can save 20% you know from four inch all the way down he's certainly going to look at that but the problem is uh, a lot of wholesalers don't want they don't know whether it's going out and whoever's buying the valve, whether they'll know where it's going. And uh, it's tough. The, the, the nice thing about our bags that are coming through now do say on the bag, this valve is not suitable for potable water. And uh, the, the bag also will say if it's lead free, this valve is safe for potable water. So it's, it's strictly assuming you can read. Sarcastic, but some people <coughs> only know pictures. I should say that's not. But they they do make that position a little better uh, for you to uh, uh, feel confident that whoever the valve is sold to is uh, aware that. He's getting a valve that's pot for potable water, or it's not for potable water. The only difference between our valves and the, and the figure number is it'll have an AB at the end of the valve number. So, uh, and if it's, if it's leaded, it's going to have no AB on it. And that's on every handle that you'll see. Um, that is in the lead-free family. 
Um, if you're handling, or a customer that you're calling on is handling any PEX valves, we do have PEX valves for Upinar, as well as Zern and Nipco or whoever they're buying their um, uh, Viega makes their own, and they're, they're the other side. The only one that is not making it, the, the, the standard one with a, with a crimp ring, stainless or copper, is Upinar. They expand the pipe and then they put it on and it goes back to its original shape and it's secure that way. And that's why this little design is a little bit different, but we have them, and they're very competitive. The, the other area that we do have a lot of parts, stainless steel handles or something that you you will be called get calls for. Um, we do make uh, some stainless and carbon steel as well as the cast iron ball valve that you've handled as well as um, gates, globes and checks in iron uh, and butterflies that are in the back of the and the most common uh, would be the lug style in either um, You'll notice on page uh, 30, uh, they either are lever or, or gear operated. And uh, <clears throat> we can go up to 30 inch or 36 inch. In some cases, 48, but I have, we don't get a lot of calls with 48. But up to 24. So that's something that you should keep in mind. And all the valves, if you want to look on page 33 where it says WOG, you'll notice that the G on WOG does not refer to approval for natural gas, propane, or gasoline, or other regulated flammable gas liquid services. The valves that are suitable for natural gas and propane will be marked with a separate <coughs> CSA logo. And that's what's on every valve here, either 125 five pound or half pound and it's CSA designation. CSA stands for the Canadian Standards Association which took over about 20 years ago AGA and now it's based in Canada. And that's for the whole North American market. Our valves are stocked in California as well as in, in, in our area where we pull from which is Pittsburgh and they have uh, more inventory and leaded product than they've ever had, or lead free, excuse me. They also stock some leaded, but uh, I think the trend is obviously growing uh, on the lead free. The uh, There are some other plumbing items that you'll notice in the lead free part of the book which uh, starts on page 20 and goes through uh, 25, 26, 27. There's a lot of product here that, uh, as a resource, don't, don't forget to, uh, if, rather than say, we don't stock that, uh, it's nice to be able to say, yeah, I can get that. And uh, you have it in a product that you're already handling, you can throw it on for a stock order with Bob. <coughs> Are there any other questions about red white, its history, where we're going? Other than You'd like to go to the plant in Italy, probably. <coughs> this one's good. We sent somebody from the warehouse, right? <laughs> and female. Yeah. Yeah, what female do they use female. the orifice <coughs> plates for? Is that for yeah. balancing hydraulics too? Yeah. Which is good. What page? Uh, uh, page 15. Do we have the UPC on it? Very low. That's good. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing mm -hmm. lots of too much water. Yeah. I, 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 I would think that's. I've never had anybody in the car. 
That's a good question. I don't know. Really, you know the answer to that? What they use that for? The orifice plate? It's a dual measuring thing. It's a wafer style flare. So it's obviously used on. I'm guessing it's probably something like a balancing valve, except you won't be able to balance that. You're just getting differential pressures or. Mm -hmm. It's obviously used on the uh, on the 9574. Doesn't even the, the iron body for the other one. So it looks like <coughs> it's a wafer style flange. It's a I'm talking about the CSA thing. No, it's the PC. PC. Uh, yeah. Back on like page 25. And the gas rating is on the ball valves. You said yeah, half to two, five, or the half, half to five, five, and 125. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. And you'll see that on here. It's copyrighted. Well, it's a registered trademark. Something or other. It's only on my post bids. It looks like a certain yeah. post bids. There's the 5G, okay, and this is the uh, 125C to G, and then the, the CSA is right there, right here. And so what's the 125? It's good for 125 pounds of gas. Gas pressure. Yeah, gas pressure. That's for a big building, you know, obviously. Yeah. One of those, you know, the gas meters, and yeah. you may find. But uh, you normally you're... Yeah, in California, that's the standard out there, right? They sell 125 pounds. Well, it's, I don't know if that's the standard. I'm not a gas guy out there, but I, I know that's why they they sell that primarily because of the weight. And, they, you know, people were used to a heavy valve. They wanted, a, they wanted all the gas rating to be that high. That's... That had to differentiate it, you know, that some of the cheaper valves that were coming in. Uh, CSA gets their pound of flesh. You uh, you don't get that rating with by sending a a, a, a nice friendly letter. Would you approve this? They want you to pay for that. So it's just like the certification for life free. We have to pay for every valve, every <coughs> size valve. You guys make them all with exhaust on it, like for air service? We do. I don't think we, we make one for <coughs> lead free. It's but not we do lead free yet. I don't think. I think we were looking for that before. Mm -hmm. Would you, uh, you see you where it says 5042 on page yeah, 12? 5042. See where it says train. 5060 has a train. Would they need that? Lead free? Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. The other thing that I wanted to ask you um, do you get calls for, um, and I'm sure you do, the ball valve with the chain? The ball valve? What well, about the hose bib? Are there any plans on doing that with your hose bib? Uh, the, the hose bid? Because most of the specs I see now that are lead free, that they still say cap and chain on the hose bid. Yeah, cap and chain. We, we make it in, in page 12, fit the, the, the valve on the bottom of the page, only in three quarter. What size do you want? <coughs> well, that's the ball valve, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm talking about the hose bib. The hose bib, a lot of our specs around here, at least from what I see, they want to have a cap and chain on their hose bibs. And you have the hose bib in lead free, just not with the cap and chain on it. I think the only one I was able to find was <coughs> Nibco. Lead free. Yeah, I'm just looking at the. the he's looking at the. Uh, Would they accept this <coughs> with a ball and chain? Yeah, it's, I wouldn't see why not, but yeah, the bib, I don't, I mean, the bib's okay. Um, 
but I, 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 the, the, the reason is that the hose bib with the, with the little molly turn is uh, you're going backwards. I mean, people are, they only they want to fall out. We sell these by the th thousands every, yeah. every day, every minute. Because people, obviously, if they can get away from multi-turn that doesn't work after a year, desincifies or it corrodes or it doesn't open all the way compared to a bowl valve, or I can get this made faster since we make it in Italy. Right. That's another <clears throat> reason. And right now they have that only in leaded, right? With the cap and chain? Well, they don't make it with cap and chain. I'm going to have to ask that. That's a good question. Well, we don't make it in, in lead free because the, the law states that anything with a hose bib doesn't have to be lead free. That's hydrant syntax. Because people normally put this on outside. Where all the kids drink out of. Yeah. And we drink out of hoses. <laughs> but that's what I do. I know. <laughs> sure. But normally you don't go out to your right. hose bib and get your drinking up your water, water, bring it in and make your mother tea. Mm -hmm. But, but not with the except those in India. Is it primarily half or three quarter? Three quarter. Because I know the only one I've been able to find is Nipco, and they're charging like twenty-two, twenty-three dollars for that thing. So the only ones that make it, they can right. charge whatever they want. Yeah, <laughs> give them a ball valve cheaper than that. <laughs> I, that's that's why they. Well, if they're <coughs> listening right now, that's going to charge you thirty. Mm -hmm. What else do you see in here that uh, we don't make? Any anything pop in your head that you uh, can remember? As so they go through on the backs, they get the four inch. We're just waiting for the check valve. Yeah. So they originally was only two and a half, wasn't it? Right. Yeah, they have or no, they were. It's just kind of now they have like. Mm. Do you get calls for uh, PEX ball valves above one inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, or two? <laughs> <coughs> We do have them with shark bite, 2XL, for pecs. That's something to keep in mind. I noticed back here at the, the hose bar, or the hose bib, what is the uh, UPC uh, stamp in the corner? Back on page 24 or left side? On the uh, 301 to 312, what's the question again? What, what is the, the UPC, the stamp up in the corner of the RW301? Well, it's Uniform Plumbing Code, that's the West Coast. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> I was going to say, I haven't seen that before. You'll notice it's over on page, on the stop and waste and on the boiler drains, Silcox rather, on page 25. Mm -hmm. Anything where you have California Strange, I guess for, for certain, I, I don't know why it's on certain product and not on gay clothes checks, for instance. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Hmm. Oh, I know what uh, guys were... With Johnny, maybe he said it, maybe he was at the last tra training. The lead free, lead free ball valves with stainless steel internals. 
It's the only thing that, like, the York Hospital, that's the only thing they'll accept. And because Jim Moore has them. It's lead free, <clears throat> bowl valve with stainless steel trim. Yep. And that would be, you know, that's coming. And is it copper or iron pipe? <clears throat> Mostly iron pipe. Mostly copper because it's a lot of solder ball valves that he sells to them. Right. Although they've been buying more. And that was another thing. They had switched to a lot of Vega Pro Press, and Vega also makes a press valve with stainless steel internals. Right. Whereas <coughs> Red White does not have the stainless steel internals. Well, I know the press valve is going to be available in stainless. That's already coming. In stainless steel trim. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the press valve. But um, the uh, the regular ball valve that might become a non-issue as they convert more and more to the to the press. But yeah, that's what that's what uh, Jerry was telling me uh, when we were at you know when we did our critique or you know kind of pulled different thoughts like this mm -hmm. issue came up and he felt that rather than go to this in a stainless steel trim that he felt that obviously <coughs> that trend is going to be going to right. that. Right. Which that and that makes sense but I think they ought to have both if they're especially if they uh, uh, I think people like Nipco, Milwaukee, Cambraco were all your know, Apollo will, will have that have a standard bull valve with, with stainless steel trim. Right, right. You know, now whether they make it lead free, I don't know. I mean, basically the only thing really is changing is the connections. One those internals be interchangeable with. Yeah. So. <coughs> it's just another it's, skew. Yeah. That's, I mean, they should. If they can put the internals on the press valve. They should be able to put it into the regular ball valve. <coughs> well, it might be a different. Uh, the ball may be the same, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't. You're right, if the ball's the same, that doesn't make sense, does it? Just thinking out loud. <laughs> <laughs> it's dangerous. <laughs> oh, God. It's all uphill. Well, as soon as I, I'll, I'll find out about that, as well as the uh, the PEX check valve, as well as the uh, the the uh, the. Uh, T, which is on page 21, which is a bronze swing <coughs> check, lead free with PTF seat. Questions? Any other products that you feel that we should be making that we aren't making? Okay, we're we're here to help you. We're here to make calls. Maybe you have uh, 
customers that uh, would like to visit. No. Right. So, what other questions do you have? So, if you stick these beside the four thousand, they look almost identical. I mean, it's, we have not, I've never probably heard of yeah. yeah. Same footprint. It is. Unfortunately, uh, <clears throat> we are uh, not a uh, cast iron factory, but uh, I wish they made more of the smaller stainless and carbon, but that's another whole issue. <clears throat> but again... I think you told me too that you can actuate the 1500s a lot easier than where yes. you can actuate theirs. Yes, it has the 5210 you know, mounting pad that's universal for oh, the ISO pad. That here, ISO pad. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, that's all all convenient because you do your own actuation here. Just in, I don't know how broadly you but uh, you've been doing that for years, haven't you? Yeah, not as much as we used to. There's so many different ones right now. We we still do it some, but right. a lot of it comes to the factory because it's made different with control valves and everything. So right. 